It's the NFL's greatest season ever on home video. We've taken the best of the best to bring you NFL football that'll grab your gut and cling to your memory. It's like the greatest to the third power. Three volumes of NFL's greatest ever videos packed in one full strength gift set. The plays, the players, and the game. This collection hosted by Steve Sable offers the greatest catches, throws, tackles, players, performances, and much more. How much greatness can you handle? Team, nice concept in life and on the field. The ones you stick by. Here are all the moments you most want to remember from the 94 season. 28 NFL teams, 28 NFL team videos, plus two expansion teams. We're all a little nosy. Football's a vocal game, and we don't mean play-by-play -play commentary. And just what is it that the players are shouting at each other? Hey, baby! We're gonna be here all day, baby! Intimidation can be more than physical. Words push their weight around, on and off the field. We've grabbed the choicest sound bites so you can experience football as you've never heard it before. In NFL Turf Talk, the 100 greatest sound bites of the NFL. This isn't college. You're not at a home conference. I, I, I understand. This is NFL, which stands for not for long when you make them calls. Yeah. I'll be selling Go. groceries. 70. This is 50 minutes of impact. The pure muscle of the game. Schwarzenegger saving the universe. Hey, you tackle problems every day. It feels good to watch someone else do the impossible for a change. It's NFL's 100 greatest tackles. This is going to be the high point of the season. Nothing comes near it, and you'll want to see it again. Superheroes, Super Power. Coming in February on video, Super Bowl 30. You know when good just doesn't come near it. And great is only halfway there. We're talking the greatest. Be sure to own the greatest season ever on home video from Polygram Video and NFL Films. In 1993, a franchise record 12 wins was the product of Euler magic. Champions! But 1994 was, unfortunately, more tragic than magic, as the team could only conjure up two wins. It was a season of near misses, as Houston suffered a team record seven losses by three points or less. But with the core of the team intact, hopes are high that 1994 will be revealed as an aberration and Houston will once again regain the form that helped them make the playoffs in seven out of the last eight years. Tolliver throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Haywood Jeffries. Potential of the human individual is infinite. Limitations are largely of habit and convention. It's very important that you remember that. In week four, the Oilers tried to get on track against division rival Cincinnati. Well, somebody got to win, I know that. Both teams are 0-3, both teams are struggling. But I think we're going to pull it out. We need to turn this thing around. It's time to turn it around now. Hopefully we'll get it on the right track today. All day long, everybody talking that craziness about the offense. Houston's offense went crazy compiling over 340 yards on the bewildered Bengals. Cincinnati's defense experienced a brownout as Oilers running back Gary Brown compiled 124 total yards and two touchdowns. Here they come after Carlson. He wants to get it away to Brown. He does. Got it. With 20, 15, 10. Cuts to his right at the five. And he goes in.
the NFL's most aggressive defense would seal the victory. The Oilers compiled a season-high seven sacks and added three interceptions. win over the Bengals was a typical outing for a secondary which helped Houston's defense finish number one in the AFC versus the pass. We finally got the monkey off our back. Woo. That was more like a gorilla than anything. One of our goals when we started was to keep the secondary intact. The, the secondary had led the NFL in interceptions. Uh, they were young. We had drafted most of them uh, in, in a draft earlier on, figuring that at some point in time they might be the core of our, of our secondary, and that's the way it's turned out. You know, that's one of the areas we really feel pretty good about. Safeties Marcus Robertson, number 31, and Blaine Bishop, number 23, hammered opposing offenses, with each of them recording over 100 tackles. Their presence was felt all over the field. Whether it was stripping runners, punishing ball carriers, or harassing quarterbacks at the line of scrimmage and far down the field. New head coach Jeff Fisher expects even better things from the cornerback position in 1995. You're going to see a resurgence in Chris Dishman. Darrell Lewis is a year off the injury, so we expect the secondary to be very productive. Number 29, Darrell Lewis had an eye-opening season, taking advantage of the other team's fear of Chris Dishman to record a team-high five interceptions. While Lewis's star is rising, Chris Dishman has been a white-hot supernova for years. In 94, Dishman showed his typical resolve not to be beat on any play. He throws it long. He's got a man. Barnett. It is caught at the 30. He breaks tackles. The ball is taken away by Dishman. He stripped him back to the 35, to the 40, 45, to the 50-yard line. He just took it out of his hands. Oh, what a play. Dishman pilfered four passes and led the team with 22 passes defensed. Against Arizona, Dishman took one the distance for 36 yards and an Oiler touchdown. The trenches were manned by defensive lineman Glenn Montgomery, number 94, Ray Childress, number 79, Kenny Davidson, number 90, and Henry Ford, number 92, who replaces departed sack leader Lamar Latham. I don't 
think last year teams took this defense lightly or for granted. This defense is a, is, a, is a highly talented defense. It's opportunistic. Some people would say that we might uh, be unsound, but we'd like to play on the edge out there someplace. Everything we do is sound, and this defense is going to come back. Um, it's young, it's aggressive, it's an exciting defense to watch and be part of. For the tenth time in his 10-year career, Childress paced the defensive line in tackles with 68 and led the team with three forced fumbles. Right now, along with the secondary, I think uh, the linebackers are uh, one of the strongest points on the defense. and. Uh, it's a, it's a good group, and I think we're going to continue to get better. Al Smith, number 54, Michael Barrow, number 56, and Eddie Robinson, number 50, anchored the linebacking core and helped sink opposing offenses. Smith led the team with 142 tackles and thrived in Jeff Fisher's defense, where a seemingly perfect pocket was no match for Smith's blitzing pass rush. In week 17, the Oilers found the Jets full of holiday spirit, as New York generously allowed Houston 381 yards on offense. Two touchdowns, paired with three Al Del Greco field goals, rounded the Jets. Pass throws over the middle, complete. Bucky Slaughter at the five and down the goal line. And Bucky Richardson on a quarterback sneak will take it in. <laughs> Bucky Richardson. Watch the running back. He'll get the call to the right side. Low White powers his way in for Good the touchdown. Job. Good job. Yeah. Houston's defense decided to play the Grinch, living in New York's backfield all day. Marcus Robertson's interception on the last play of the game sealed head coach Jeff Fisher's first win. Against the Jets, Houston's running game pounded out a season-high 175 yards. In 1995, expect more of the same as the team hopes Gary Brown is ready to regain his Pro Bowl form. He better be. It's time. <laughs> Gary is an outstanding running back, he really is. Injury hampered Brown in 94, but he was still able to churn out 648 yards on the ground and lead the team with four rushing touchdowns. A power runner with deceptive speed and moves in the open field, Brown is always fighting for the extra yard and is rarely taken down by one defender. Brown is also an excellent receiver, averaging over 10 yards per catch, outstanding for a running back. Gets the call right up the middle, touchdown!
Stepping out of the shadows in 1994 to take over at quarterback was eighth-year oiler Cody Carlson. Carlson was effective until injuries prematurely ended his season. Carlson was forced to pass the job to Bucky Richardson, number seven, and Billy Joe Tolliver, number 11. Bucky was the team's highest rated quarterback in 94, and was also the team's third leading rusher. His rushing skills were invaluable as he proved to be more adept at avoiding a hit than taking one. and also tied for the team lead in touchdown passes. And Bucky back to pass, has the time, now scrambles a bit, now throws to the end zone, touchdown! Bucky turns, makes the handoff, rolls right, in trouble, throws to the end zone, cut, touchdown! Now wants to throw, now does throw, and is caught in the end zone, touchdown, Haywood Jeffries! Everyone's favorite target in 94 was Haywood Jeffries, who tied for the team lead with 68 catches and led the team with six touchdowns. A major factor in both Jeffries and Richardson's success were the perfect pockets often created by the offensive line. Brad Hopkins, number 72, John Flannery, number 55, Kevin Donnelly, number 77, and David Williams, number 73, filled the enormous gaps left by the retirement of nine-time Pro Bowler Mike Munchak. Seven-time Pro Bowler Bruce Matthews will again anchor the line. But in 95, another Pro Bowler will be on hand to aid him. Bruce Matthews is one of the best offensive linemen in the game. Plus, with the addition of Mark Stepnowski, we're going to have one of the best offensive lines in the game. And if, if uh, I do the things I need to do, uh, we should have a great, a great season running the football. He can win. Uh, he's, he provides us with those leadership qualities up front. Now, just to think that he's going to line up next to Mark Stepnoski on offensive line is really going to solidify things for us. Matthews will move from center to guard in 95, with Stepnoski taking over at center. With the fiery passion of Matthews and the icy stoicism of Stepnoski, the outlook is bright for the line in 1995. In 1994, the Oilers often led early, but more often than not, relinquished that lead. Entering minicap in 1995, Coach Fisher decided to start from scratch. We felt that when the season was over, we felt it was important to assemble the best coach and staff that we could uh, with the priority being that of a teaching background. We need teachers to come in and reteach the game. Before the watchful eyes of both Floyd Reese and Coach Fisher, Houston prepares for 1995. The learning atmosphere is appreciated by players both old and new. I was excited about the, the coaches they had hired this year to to come in and work with the players. Um, you know, I'd had experience in the past with Jerry Rome, the offensive coordinator, and uh, I knew a lot about Larry Bechtel, the offensive line coach. Hit it! Hit hands! All right, hands them again! Good job in there! Nice work! Let's go! Hands, hands them up again! Take them inside! Good, good, good! Good job! Yeah, 
Good job in there, Hoppy. Good job. Sounds like calling Hoppy when he does good stuff. You do what I'm asking you to do. There's no way the guy can beat you. Coach Fisher shows a definite hands-on approach with his players. Hey, Gary, Gary, when you get pads on, they're going to run through there and they're going to step out of your way because you run over their ass every time. Okay. But you fight and scratch and claw, and when they finally let you go, go get the rest of it, okay? What you're doing is the back releases, you're staying inside, right? Soft, on top, inside. So if he's here, you're here. Now he breaks the flat. Now you got depth to get to curl. Don't sit in there and jam him and that kind of thing because this is soft. It's soft. That's what we're saying, right? Go get that thing and put it away. If you, you wait that time in your body, they're going to strip it now. Go get that thing and secure it. Drive it, drive it, drive it. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Drive it, drive it, drive it. Hit it, hit it, right there. Okay, Michael. That's a good job. That's it, Kenny. That's good. That's good position. You held that thing off and you're ready to drive on it. Good. That's it right there. Good job, Marcus. Just going through word of mouth, I got opinions from guys whose opinions I respect and um, you know heard good things about all those people. So you know that helped me make my decision. Two new faces are prominent: Stepnoski and quarterback Chris Chandler, who joins the Oilers after a productive season with the Rams. One area of the team that remains exemplary is special teams. Kicker Al Del Greco had an outstanding year, connecting on 80% of his kicks, with the longest average per make of any kicker in the NFL. Hunter Rich Camarillo continued to uphold the standard of excellence he has set throughout his 14-year career. Camarillo had the third best net punting average in the NFL, and also tied for the league lead in kicks inside the 20. Special teams coverage was the domain of Spencer Tillman, number 32, and John Henry Mills, number 48, who led the team in special team tackles. For the first time since 1977, Houston was able to celebrate a punt return for a touchdown. Ernie comes up to the 22. Gibbons starts to his left. Gibbons to the 25, cuts it to the 30, the outside. In 1995, lengthy returns figured to occur with much greater frequency. Who is the best out there? We said, well, Mel's the guy. Then we said, well, we're, we're going to sign Mel, find a way, if there's any way at all to do that. In 1994, Mel Gray became the NFL's all-time leader in kick return yardage en route to scoring a league-leading three return touchdowns. Gray also led the NFL in return average with over 28 yards per return. The Oilers have a common goal. To improve. Uh, we need to improve. We have to have a, a good training camp that's centered around teaching. Uh, we're going to improve the positions in all, uh, in all areas of our football team and become competitive again in the division. I think we, we have to improve. I want to see dramatic improvement. Where that will go, I'm not sure. Hopefully improve and uh hopefully see us turn this thing around. We're not going to go out and, and be passive at all. I think we're going to go out and be very aggressive on offense and defense 
And uh, with that type of attitude, I think that we can make big strides. We were always a team that was respected. And when teams saw the Oilers, they knew it was going to be a physical battle. And uh, I think that's where we're going to be next year. In April of 1995, the Oilers made a giant step towards improving. Steve McNair comes to the Oilers on the heels of a record-breaking season at Alcorn State. Possessed with a powerful and accurate arm, McNair is also dangerous running the football. With almost all the pieces in place, the Oilers' outlook is bright for 1995 as they begin the process of starting over.